Hey, Paul here for Retro Gaming Arts, and today what I want to talk about is all the major consoles and what video qualities they output natively and which ones they output through modification. Most of the time, if the console outputs it natively, all you have to do is just get the correct cables and hook it up that way. So let's go. The NES outputs composite natively, where you just plug in composite cables and it works. The modifications you could do is you can get S video out of it if you RGB mod it. The RGB mod chip for the NES also has S video capabilities. And then you can also HDMI mod it, but I find those chips are pretty hard to get a hold of. The Sega Master System outputs composite and RGB natively. You just need a cable to get the RGB signal out of the Sega Master System. You could also S-Video mod it because it has the same encoder as the Sega Genesis as well. So the Super Nintendo outputs composite and S-Video on every single one. And every single one does output RGB, but most of them you won't get a clear signal from the RGB. Uh, the one chips is a pretty much a guaranteed RGB signal, but it doesn't have to be a one chip in order to get the RGB signal out of the Super Nintendo. You just have to check to see if your Super Nintendo will output RGB. You can also component mod it, which is essentially pulling the RGB signal and uh, converting it to component. And then the uh, Super Nintendo Junior does not output any of this, but you can put RGB back into the Super Nintendo Junior, Junior to get RGB out of it. The Sega Genesis outputs composite and RGB uh, natively. This applies to Model 1s and Model 2s. And then you can also S-Video mod the Model 1 and the Model 2 to get S-Video out of it. The Turbo Graphics only outputs RF and you can get composite out of the turbo graphics with a turbo booster which is an add-on that turbo graphics made for the turbo graphics and it has composite out the back you can also do a simple modification to get the composite video but they can also be rgb modded and this goes the rgb mod goes for the entire turbo graphics family any pc engine any turbo graphics anything the Sega 32X outputs composite video and RGB. All you need is the correct cables, and you can also modify the 32X to have S video as well. Now, the Sega CD, whatever output your Genesis is outputting, your Sega CD will output. Or if you have a Genesis and a 32X, the Sega CD will output whichever way you're outputting. So if you have a 32X and S video, into a Genesis, into a Sega CD, you will be outputting your Sega CD in S-Video. And that applies to RGB or anything with any other Sega that goes on to the Sega CD. The Sega Saturn outputs composite, S-Video, and RGB natively. You don't need anything. You could also get a HD RetroVision cable for the Genesis in a Saturn adapter to get component video, but the HD RetroVision cables will only output on a television that is capable of 240p resolution. PlayStation 1, no modification necessary. They output composite, S-Video, and RGB, and it's beautiful, it's wonderful. All you need is the correct cables. For the, for the Nintendo 64, they output composite and S-Video natively. You can modify your Nintendo 64 to get RGB, and depending on your model, N64 will depend on your RGB mod chip that you will need. Some need to have the RGB signal added back into the N64, and some only need the RGB signal amplified. You can also HDMI mod the N64, but again, those chips I find to be very scarce and hard to come by. They're always sold out. The PlayStation 2, it's just like the PlayStation 1. It outputs composite, S-Video, and RGB natively. No modifications necessary, but it also has component video, so you can play your PS1 games on a PS2 in component. The GameCube com uh, outputs composite and S-Video and component natively. Uh, the component cables are pretty expensive. Now, the GameCube will output RGB, but only the PAL GameCube. Only if you have a European GameCube will it output the RGB signal. 
all other GameCubes do not have the RGB signal and they cannot be added back into it. You can also HDMI mod your GameCube, but a lot of different HDMI mods have been created, prototypes, they haven't been perfected or mainstreamed yet. The original Xbox, it's similar to the PS2 where it does composite, S-video, RGB, and component natively out the box. You can also modify the Xbox for VGA, but it's not as simple as just a simple mod. You have to, uh, you have to do all sorts of stuff in order to get it to output, but component just in RGB look amazing on it. Now the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast is the best. It outputs composite S-Video and RGB natively. It also natively outputs VGA, but you will either need to get a VGA box or VGA mod it. Now there's a lot of aftermarket VGA boxes from Bahar Bros, so you can, you can even get the Acura box, which is a VGA to HDMI converter box. And that's, that's the one I have, and that is the best one in my opinion. But you can get a simple VGA box if your TV has a VGA output, or you can VGA mod it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this helped. I hope this was informative. And if you have any questions about how to hook any of this up, uh, feel free to ask me in the comments, and I'll see you next time.